Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In the previous video I introduced the Advanced ISRU Lander, uh, which is what we see here. We have two of them here and I explained how I basically designed them using uh, the stock parts plus modded parts and put it together so that we can drill for resources on the moon uh, with these, these are the lunar version. Uh, drill for ore in particular on the moon to convert it to liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen to refuel our vessels. For this is the first time I'm going to try and launch two of them on the same launch with the rocket. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And there are other things about the landers that I have questions about. Uh, I don't think I've implemented waste heat, especially with the reactors properly. Uh, right now the reactors are just generators, so they're just giving the power without any, you know, other stuff going on. I had copied the modules for the stock ISR unit into this, uh, so I thought waste heat would be generated, but KSP Interstellar is showing no waste heat production. I'll keep the same radiators I had in the vessel that I had tested before, so even though we're not apparently producing waste heat, we'll assume that we are. And so we have the radiators for that. But I need to fix that, obviously. I need to make sure it does produce waste heat because the reactors certainly do. Um, again, we have 150 kilowatt electricity reactors, not kilowatt thermal. That's one megawatt thermal. And we need to make sure that they do what they're supposed to. Honest, I also have to have the uranium and all that stuff there. I don't have those as resources right now because uh, I wasn't clear how much of it I could do without KSB Interstellar. Because uh, the reactor I was using as a basis was with KSB Interstellar. So anyway, that's a whole other caveat. Let's talk about the rocket. Uh, so unfortunately, the landers, the pair of them, are too wide for the upper stage here. So I have to use a procedural fairing instead of my normal fairing, which is the normal fairing that I had made for the New Glenn rocket because we have a New Glenn upper stage. Uh, same normal stuff going on here, two BE3Us. As I've mentioned before, I view this stage as sort of a J2 uh, S4B stage, basically the upper stage of Saturn, uh, Saturn V. So I sort of think of it that way and hope that it has similar characteristics most of the time. And yeah, so we're launching uh, the 37 ton ish payload to the moon with this. And so that's our upper stage. And it'll be doing a little bit less than a normal S4B stage would. Instead of uh, finishing our orbit completely and uh, you know doing maybe the last 1,000 meters per second, which is what the S4B stage did, and then sending us to the moon, it's not going to do. It's only going to do a tiny little bit of orbit completion, and it's actually going to be focused on sending us to the moon and then capturing us into orbit around the moon, which is why we have MLI layers. So it's doing a somewhat different job, and it's underfueled. The reason it's underfueled isn't for thrust to weight ratio. If we uh, unlock these tanks, we see that it's got 0.88, which is fine. You know, I mean, we could top this off easily without it having a huge thrust weight ratio problem, considering where it's at. Uh, so, yeah, it's not underfueled for thrust weight ratio reasons. It's underfueled uh, so that the the shuttle mice can come back. So, what we have here is the ultimate collaborative SLS. Yes, that's that's what we're calling it. Um, it is a Blue Origin upper stage Raptor 9 boosters with Raptor engines from uh, SpaceX and these are designed to come back. Oh, I think I forgot the grid fins. Oops, I need to put on grid fins here. Okay, I've put on the grid fins, but basically these are recoverable boosters. We'll reserve the last 20 seconds. They have my I wish I had money to patent things grid fins. <laughs> uh, not, not grid fins, landing fins. Uh, which have those sort of uh, stabilizers on the tail there. Yeah, there are a lot of things I wish I had money to patent, but uh, anyway. And then uh, the also I wish I could patent shuttle mice, but then again, I think these are based on an idea that was uh, done before anyway. So anyway, um, SSME returners. So the, the, the main engines for SLS, the RS-25s are on these shuttle mice and in my sort of head canon about this these are made by Sierra Nevada Corporation even though they're not really dream chaser shaped uh, they, they, they seem to be interested in space planes so yeah uh, that's my head canon so 
Anyway, the shuttle mice can return. I've tested that before. The landing part is uh, going through re-entry is fine. They're very stable through re-entry. The problem is their their touchdown speed is way too high. So that's something to work on. And we didn't. It turns out I didn't need all this uh, fuel capacity for what they do. But the point is that they need to get pretty close to orbit so that their return glide slope is not too steep. And that's why we're underfueling the nuclear upper stage. Otherwise, the shuttle mice will be left in a very steep orbit. And, you know, because New Glenn upper stage will then complete the rest of the orbit, uh, more of the orbit. And at a steep trajectory, I don't know if the shuttle mice can deal with the heat. So that's why we are underfueling the upper stage. But anyway, this is the configuration of the ultimate collaborative SLS with theoretically Sierra Nevada Corporation, of course, uh, air jet rocket nine engines, Boeing tank, uh, the Raptor nine boosters or Unix boosters with SpaceX engines and uh, a blue origin upper stage. So, yep. Uh, well, anyway, uh, <laughs> you guys can have your thoughts about it, but it's going to be used and possibly a lot. Okay, let's bring out the launch pad and launch our mining landers to the moon. All right, it looks like it's a nighttime launch for us to the moon. Unfortunately, this is the solar system tourism save that I use on Twitch. And we have other commitments. Uh, for instance, we have the ISS with four crew right now, Skylab 2 with one crew, a Mars vessel with two crew, Mir core with three crew. That's around the moon. Um, Saturn station with two crew, that's on the way, it's not actually there yet. A Uranus mission with one crew, a Mars vessel 2 with two crew. Um, there's a ILV, that's on the moon with one crew. Uh, base uh, module with one crew. Uh, Mercury return vessel with two crew, that's still around Mercury. And uh, another uh, crew pod on the moon with three crews. So, I can't really time warp to a better time of the year where it's going to be daylight to transfer to the moon. We just have to take it right now as it is. There's a rare case of me doing something in this save that isn't on a live stream and is instead during a video. So, yep, but we'll go with it because I want to land it at the particular location where we have our other assets to assess the lag situation. So, uh, ignition. Launch. So 18 Raptor engines and four RS 25s. Hopefully, RS 25 Ds. <laughs> so, again, we are going to try and reuse the Raptor uh, stages as well as the RS 25s. Those are supposed to be reusable. Uh, but the main tank is just discarded. And so is the. Well, I mean. In theory, we're going to be getting the New Glenn upper stage into orbit around the moon. So if want, anybody wants to sort of tug that into something and figure out how to refuel it, that'll be fine. And also maybe replace the engines because I don't think uh, the engines have that many ignitions. So it's an option though. That's an option. And then you could have it use it as a tug and send something back to Earth orbit or something, I don't know. There are possibilities. Oh, why did it, it topped off the ore. Hold on. We don't need to be carrying the ore. Let me just dump that. Oh, great. As usual, I forgot to action group the engines on these stages, so I'll have to go with the shutting off the fuel thing. Usually do that during the live stream as well. Okay, and cut, cut, and separate. So we reserved about 20 seconds worth for them to go back home. Home is not too far away, as you can see. These procedural fairings don't quite separate the way my normal fairings do. And they're also in the direction of the shuttle mice, which I wish I didn't have. Um, I don't know if I can trust them. <laughs> We're pretty low thrust to weight ratio right now. 
I'm gonna point at the prograde vector and then give, give them a go. We're certainly not gonna carry them all the way to orbit and this stage is basically gonna get us there. Uh, please clear the mice, please clear the mice. Okay. Well, looking at the numbers, we're getting a little bit further from orbit than I really wanted to with this stage and the shuttle mice. But I think they would survive coming back down from this. As far as getting into lunar orbit, though, we might have a little bit more of a problem. We'll see. I mean, the landers themselves could get into lunar orbit. They've got a spare delta V for that. Their tanks are actually sized more for having the capacity to store the fuels than what the lander itself n strictly needs for landing. Though, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I would say so. Part of the consideration for the tank size on the landers was the thrust-to-weight ratio that was provided by the BE-7s, so... They provide a certain thrust-to-weight ratio, which allows for a certain capacity. The shuttle mice use their own hypergolic fuels in order to return. They don't need to reserve any fuel in the main tank. Okay, separation and ignition. Okay, 251 by 210. And... Come on, game. It's auto saving again. Probably a good idea to extend the radiators now. Considering we have, you know, reactors on board that are currently always on. So, yeah, let's radiate some of that. Though, again, I need to fix how waste heat is being counted. It's one of those things. We'll see if there's anything else I need to fix. So, uh, wow, we could just go right now, I think. Now, in introducing what I've been doing on Twitch, I have to point out that all that stuff takes a very long time. If you're used to the YouTube pace of things, the Twitch pace, I'm amazed people can stand watching it, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, if you think half-hour videos is bad, wait till you see three hours of live streams where we're taking care of one mission. So, yeah. Just a little comment and editing. It occurs to me looking at the comments that people took that whole thing about the half hour a little bit too seriously. The videos are gonna end up as long as the videos need to end up as far as I'm concerned. I'm, I wasn't taking uh, that one person's comment too seriously. Sorry for making that big deal. Yeah, we could probably have underfueled this tank even more than we have. Though I haven't seen the boil off on it yet. Okay, a little bit suborbital there, but all right. We will obviously be doing a big course correction. But inclination wise, we seem to be fine. Well, we could actually do with a little bit more inclination. Where we are landing is there with the other ISRU landers. We are experiencing some boil off. I don't think the hydrazine is going to be enough, so I'm going to try and shut down one engine and see if we can just use one engine to do the burn. Otherwise, there'll be too much thrust. Let me kill rotation. Okay. That's fine. And that will do the trick for now. Okay, let's go to periapsis around the moon and then capture and then work on everything else. We've got three more ignitions with the BE-3Us. So ultimately, it's obviously important that the landers be able to produce liquid hydrogen faster than it boils off. That was an initial problem that I fixed. Hopefully it stays fixed. We'll see how these work, if they work. That's still an open question. Geez, everything seems to be happening at nighttime this time. Is the landing side at least in daytime? Nope. And ignition. So, assuming that the New Glenn upper stage can be trusted to deal with stuff for three days, that's an assumption, and not have too much boil off, we can put 37 tons into orbit around the moon with the 
ultimate collaborative SLS. Okay, that's a pretty low periapsis. Hopefully it's in the right place. And still theoretically recover the Raptor 9 slash Unix boosters as well as our little shuttle mice with the RS-25s. Optimistically, we'll say. I mean, let's not put too much credence into the point. But, you know, it's an idea. Well, this is not good, is it? We'd have to wait quite a few days for that location to go there. Yeah, I should have figured that out a little bit earlier. It'd probably take me... Because, you know, every location on the moon would take 28 days to go around, so... Like, so probably like 9-10 days. Um, on the other hand, we could see if the landers can actually deal with it. I think we should try to use this stage to correct our... or to... tilt ourselves as much as possible. And then use the landers to do the rest. And yes, obviously, try not to do this kind of burn ever. But here we are. And ignition. Alright, so... The lunar surface. That's an interesting place, isn't it? As far as propellants in our landers, we definitely have enough. Let's separate off one lander and see. Hopefully it's not going to make too much of a mess because we're going to be in an imbalanced sort of situation. I'm keeping the RCS on to try and balance it out. But the couple... Oh, that's not too bad. I was thinking it might knock into it or do something horrible, but it's it's okay. Also, it asks to control from the right place. So it's still got the Aerozine and NTO as its RCS. I could have easily configured other RCS, but I decided to keep everything to exactly what I had with the test landers from the live streams. Uh, I might as well just stage it. 3,600 meters per second right now. 3,600, again, is more than we need to capture and land even. So that's close. We can do the rest of the adjustment later, and this will give us time for, uh, just in case it moves a little bit. So we're going to do a god-awful 900 meter per second burn. And ignition. And importantly, let's see that things are not... Uh, there's a little bit of pitch being used. Let's see if it settles out or whether it's a big problem. Oh, uh, it's going to be a big problem. Uh, let me SAS this. So, I do use the landing guidance information, but I don't actually use landing guidance to land for me. I actually want to go straight into a landing trajectory. So I don't need as high a periapsis as I originally plotted. And that looks good to me. Okay. So we are on our way. We've got throttling on these engines, so I've got some leeway based on how it goes. Let me sell the fuel down and ignition. Six minutes only. Uh, no, if six, it's a six minute burn time, so I'll check how long it'll take us to get a little bit further than the target. That's eight minutes still, so we can wait a little bit, maybe two and a half minutes. Okay, ignition again. And we'll also have a little bit of pitch because... We won't have enough time to kill the surface velocity before hitting the surface without a little bit of pitch. Oh, there's our target. We're now within 100 kilometers. Uh, we got. We sort of picked a thing that's off to one side compared. Oh, no, oh, the game is. Uh, so we're entering render range. Yeah, I picked something off to one side. That's not great. Um, I just want to make sure we're still 
proximal to everything else. No, oh, okay, we're hovering. We're hovering now. <laughs> I'll have to shut down. And we're down. Okay, Arcea, sorry, it's really hard to see that we're down. Maybe a light post around here would be good. But we can see our other landers there and also the crude pod over there uh, within a kilometer. So. It's good enough. We should be able to access them through simple logistics. That ore is sort of flickering because uh, it's being produced by the drilling units and then immediately consumed. So that's why. Let's make sure to deploy the drills. And what we want to see is that this all works properly. Start surface harvester. We haven't started a converter yet. They don't harvest very quickly. And maybe somehow with, I don't know how to add an engineer to this or something like that. Maybe that'll help the efficiency of the drills. I, I, I don't know if we have to like have a little command chair with the engineer sort of sitting on it or whether it has, the engineer has to be in render range or anything like that. Now you guys can tell me if an engineer you think would help in this situation as far as the efficiency of how fast we drill for ore. Uh, the converters, so we, we're, we are getting ore there. And then if we turn on the ISRU hydrogen, uh, it still it doesn't be it doesn't seem to be replenishing faster than boil off. It's definitely there's a difference 0 0.03 versus 0 0.02, but we're gonna need it to be more efficient than that. As far as the locks is concerned, we get more of it. So, again, these are things that need to be worked out. I'll start the ISRU for hydrogen as well. You know, working uh, again, this is working the regolith rather than working uh, ice patch. An ice patch would be a different sort of situation as far as the numbers can. We'd be flowing in hydrogen and oxygen. So, maybe I'll set a different version of the lander to be an ice patch specific configuration for these so that you know it'll replenish at that level but we'll only be able to work off of well it still would be just hydrogen and oxygen so i'll think about that also want to make one for titan titan would be nice uh, that would give you a lot of resources pretty darn quickly too and maybe a mars ice patch version would be good too they, those are all will all be configuration changes rather than new models anyway so we can duplicate the same part basically and make it a different type and trust the user to use the right ones in the right locations, I guess. Uh, but if we do plug in here and go to our lander, we've got the other vessels working. So there's the lander with uh, three Kerbals in, uh, two viewers who I don't remember if they've ever shown up again. They were tourists. Anyway, um, we are going to transfer what hydrogen and oxygen has been produced. Oh, that, that, that disappeared. I think, oh, I think it's because it's boiling off. We'll allow, because uh, I put it to the top, but some boils off, so it's less than the number that we have here. So we'll just request a little bit less than that then. Okay, we're pretty much topped off here. We don't need it. We've got 4,364. All we have to do is get back to orbit. Well, I take that back. This has to rendezvous with that gateway. We've sort of put a... Where's gateway? Gateway. We've sort of put gateway into a halo-ish orbit. Uh, not polar, though, because our current location is not a polar. Well, I mean, it could get to a polar location, but only once every 14 days. Well... Caveat to that, if you put it into a really high polar orbit, changing inclination is not that. So I could probably rendezvous with Gateway anytime. But if it was in a polar halo orbit. But I put it here anyway because we already have a polar station. And that's Mir, oddly enough. But that's a whole other story. So it does have to get to this Gateway in this high orbit. So maybe having all the fuel topped off is good. 
But anyway, that's going to be for a live stream some other day when we get these guys back to orbit. But the one part lander works and we will try further escapades based on this. I've got many lunar parts. We do need to see about its use on Mars potentially. Uh, we've got other Mars things to do beforehand. But with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.